might be easy to say, even harder to get around to. Easy to blame the situation on the clowns around you. Passing the buck, throwing the book at them. Never looking back and never backing up to look at them. One arm on the wheel and one on the top of the bench seat while I reverse the automobile. Pick up trucks to pick up stuck up sluts and ride up half an inch high on 20 inch wheels. Just another of the many needles sticking in my eye, generating irritation when the rubber squeals. You think I'm the shit, and that's all right with me, yeah, with me, yeah. Well, I heard you think I'm the shit, and that's all right with me, yeah, with me, yeah. Now, what's, doctor, what's wrong with men today? The great doctor was silent a moment, and he said, men simply don't. It's time for another episode. Uh, I kind of made a crazy time warp and I'm completely lost right now, so I've really got to get back to work on this. But, guys, um, I've got uh, some entertainment for you. Uh, hopefully the timer is set back on my base that can translate and distribute and broadcast. That's the word I was looking for. See, I'm a little confused right now, lost in this time warp. But it's a great movie. You're going to love it. Um... The amazing Al Adamson bringing you two classic Universal monsters together in one of the dumbest ways possible. I believe that this movie is also a victim of some of the timeline crises that I'm dealing with because I don't believe these creatures should have been around at the same time during this time period. And really why they care about the things they care about on this beach, I don't know. Uh, featuring a low point for uh, Lon Chaney Jr., but a high point for us, right? Of course. And uh, a Dracula that looks kind of like Frank Zappa, and a Frankenstein's monster that kind of looks like mashed potatoes, featuring a cameo by uh, Uncle Forey, Forrest J. Ackerman. It is Al Adamson's Dracula versus Frankenstein versus Frankenstein versus Dracula. I don't know, I think somewhere in the timeline that might have changed. I'll have to fix that. Alright, guys, just go watch the movie. Go on, go watch the movie. I'll see you later.
Who's that? Suitcases tonight, huh? Oh, I'll see you later in my dressing room. Okay. Miss Fontaine? Yes. A telegram. Thank you. Joni Fontaine still reported as missing. Sergeant Martin. Missing Persons Bureau.
You think you could uh, remember to find your way back, Miss Fontaine? I'm afraid I lost you on the second turn. Now, have a seat. I didn't ask you that question to be funny. But if you think our few corridors are complicated, where do you start roaming the back streets of Venice? I've got to find my sister, Sergeant Martin. You know, Joni and I were both orphaned for quite some time, and I'm the only one she's got. I got the impression we first met that you're just not the kind to sit around and wait for things to happen. That's quite true. Let me tell you something, Miss Fontaine. In this case, that's the best thing you can do. Sit around and just wait. Here. Your kid sister chose to live with a bunch of hippies out near the beach. Now, it seems that living near the water brings out the best and the worst in us. There's an amusement park just east of the pier. It's a hangout for pushers and white slavery operators. Oh, yeah, we still got them around. And you'd be surprised just how many young girls come out here just hoping to get involved in all this kind of stuff. There's some shots. Murder. Rape. Beatings. Now, maybe you asked yourself the question, why do all these terrible things have to happen? Well, it took me 21 years of my 22 on this business to get the answer. And last, I have it. What is the answer? These people want these things to happen. Does that sound too simple? Well, not really. Because it's the most complicated thing in the world. Nobody but nobody knows anything about the subconscious, Miss Fontaine. Not even ourselves. Yeah, it's a dark, dark world, Miss Fontaine. Creatures, see how his head is chopped off. See the blood squirting right up before your very eyes. Why, you see this creature. You will be so stunned that you won't know that you're alive. Hey, where are we going? This way. Come right inside. Hey, we got to have a ticket to go in here. All right. We want to buy a ticket. 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 One dollar. <laughs> See what I do with it? <laughs> I eat it. Let's go. Come right in. Do not be afraid. This is Dr. DeRay's Creature Emporium. Before you, you will see sights that you will not believe. But I assure you that each and every one of them is true and has happened many times in history. But I don't even see anything. You see, you must open your eyes to see things. There's more to come! <laughs> <laughs> because this is all unknown for you. The greatest mysteries in the world are not mysteries at all, unless we take time to become familiar with them. He's really a gentle fellow. But put that mask on him, and the whole world will gladly turn against him. I have this exhibit unattended for several reasons. I believe we all should experience life with a natural spontaneity. And this can only happen if there are no restraints. Do you agree? The Romans had their Circus Maximus, 
seating over 200,000. But their spectacles were no more bizarre than that which I can conjure up for you right here. Now, look here. Now look there. Man, it sure looks real. True, all illusions look real, or they wouldn't be illusions, would they? Man, that place would give anybody the creeps. Poor baby, you're afraid of everything. Yeah. Come on, let's get ready for the big protest tonight. Why are we protesting tonight? I don't know, but I'll bet it's fun. Guys, I hope you're having a good time. I just wanted to check in. It was it Dracula versus Frankenstein or Frankenstein versus Dracula? I don't really remember. Uh, that creepy Dr. Frankenstein relative in the wheelchair in his uh, haunted house, that does drag on a little bit, but I think he's probably the only one acting in this whole film. But, I mean, what do you expect? It's Al Adamson during uh, his heydays. Uh, I would advise check out some great movies uh, from him like Black Samurai or uh, Satan Sadists. Or that Satan Satan spin-off he did with his good buddy Colonel Sanders, which I cannot think of the name at the moment. Because I think the timeline might have erased it. Oh no! Let me go check on Colonel Sanders! Make sure he's still there! Well, Grogan, I see you've arranged the tables correctly this time. What about the temperature? Have you tested it to the exact degree? You heard them up there, Groton. They want to see an illusion. They do not realize that the reality itself is the grandest illusion of all and that human blood is the essence from which future illusions may be created. What's the secret? is not to have the blood at rest. No, the circulatory system must experience a traumatic shock. One that is inconceivable to the human mind. The idea of trauma is not a new one, but I am sure I am the first such experimenter to incorporate the horror of an actual decapitation with the later rejuvenation of a human body. My, it's remarkable. A few scars. Scars that with time will dissolve away. Nothing more. Has she not been drugged into a surface somnolence? She could walk away from us now as though nothing had happened on that fateful night. But of course we cannot allow that to happen. No, not until enough of the serum has been made and tested. Oh, she's a lucky young woman, Groton. We have desperate need of her blood. She has survived in cafetation as manufacturing the right type of vital fluid for us. We are not butchers, Groton. We don't have this young lady here to merely drain her body and cast her aside. No, we are scientists. And we must have others to experiment with. You understand that, Groton? And you also understand what must happen to you once again. Now, Groden, on with the work we must continue tonight.
Rotten, you have your Don't wander away from the pier. We all wait for you, Groton. Walk silent and walk well. Exhibit is closed, and how did you get in here anyway? Oh, that is unimportant, Doctor. You see, I know your secret. There are ways that we can help each other. All right. Come into the light and we'll talk. into my house and casts no reflection on my mirror and upon his hand wears the unholy crest of Dracula. There is no scientific answer to anything. Now what is on your mind, Count Dracula? Dr. Frankenstein, I know you were raised by the Duray family before your crippling accident were discredited by members of the Medical Institute because of your real family's background. That short a rather brilliant career, but your mind and surgeon skill were meant to fulfill the Frankenstein dream and to infuse life into that artificially created man likes of which civilization will never forget. Do not escape your destiny, just as I cannot escape mine. What you say is very true. Very true. If only I had a way to get the power I should have, I'd show those fools out there who think of me only as a carnival freak. And, and get your revenge on Drs. Beaumont, Stedman, and Markey, who ruined your career caused the accidental fire which crippled you as you are now. Yes, yes. Yes, it's all clear now. They were the ones. But what does this mean to you? I have in my possession the remains of the original Frankenstein monster, put to rest in Oakmore Cemetery by one of a group of scientists experiments with the monster were cut short by an epidemic 
which plagued this area many, many years ago. The only remaining scientist had secretly buried the monster, hoping to resume his experiments at a later date. He also was the man who discredited you for fear that you had knowledge of his work with the monster, Dr. Beaumont. Beaumont. When Groton returns, he will be... Relax, Doctor. I will give you orders and you will follow them. You don't frighten me. I live beyond the fear. you wouldn't keep saying that. Oh, I love to have you in my arms like this. I like to think of you as belonging to me. Oh, come on, will you? The second time you've done that tonight. I hear it again. Like a huge dog prowling the beach. Well, he's probably looking for his mate. And I found mine. <laughs> Bob, I don't want to stay here any longer. All right. All right. The first thing you said when I picked you up tonight is you were tired of being in a crowd, right? You wanted to go someplace quiet and alone. So, I blow a dollar on gas, we come all the way out here. You know what's the matter with you, don't you? It's that damned imagination of yours. Hey, wait a minute. <sighs> I hear it now, too. Oh, don't listen to it. Let's get out of here.
Jack de Beaumont, tonight you shall meet an old friend. that scare you? Did this movie scare you? Did the budget of this movie scare you? Hopefully this version's nicely blurred enough so the uh, the lady in this doesn't notice her mustache so much in this film. Uh, but yeah. So, uh, I just want to check in. I just want to make sure you're okay. Feeling better? Somebody thought you were a cop, slipped you a drug. You were in another world. Who are you? Where am I? My name is Mike Howard. This is my pad. Who are you? I'm Judith. No last name? Did you want one? No, not necessarily. Let me see if I can guess. Oh, I see the same turn in the nose, the full upper lip. You know Joni. I knew Joni. I don't know where she is now. You know, no one here will talk about anyone. It's a kind of self-preservation. Between urban renewal and the county welfare department, we get bombarded with questions and relays. Your ears get curled on the inside. What do you mean you knew Joni? What I mean is, in this part of town, everyone knows everyone in one way or another. How did I get here? Come on, I won't hurt you. They brought you here. Th that's Samantha. She goes with that goofy-looking kid over there. He's strange. Well, th that's his name, also classification. You sound rather cynical. Not a bit. It's just an observation. That's my bag. I make observations for later replay. Like the football game on TV. Hey, Mike! We found the guy chopped up down at Rocky Point. He was all in bloody and bits and pieces. What are you talking about? I never found his girlfriend, though. The guy can't make out in peace anymore. Man, it's a real bummer. Well, it's not usually this gory on the premise, is it? Maybe we better go inside. No, wait. Just a little bit more fresh air. Okay, go. On. Like I told you, she didn't say much. 
We saw her on the beach about six months ago. Mm, that's just about the time she left home. Now, this section of the beach draws a lot of weary, conscious people. They can take those deep breaths they've been dreaming about. Joni was up by the amusement park. That was a big attraction. A big attraction? She used to have fantasies about, about being a freak. A freak? Oh, I can't believe that. Two heads, an eye missing, an elongated spine, anything that was grotesque had turned her on. Uh, like, that's not the whole story. The idea was to turn into something beautiful by using some magical formula. That's why she used to hang around that creature emporium. What in the world is a creature emporium? A leftover from the sidewalk carnival days, run by a Dr. Dore. At least that's the name he, that's the name he uses. You mean this place is a house of freaks? Oh, everything's phony. It's strictly for the tourists. On the other hand, I suppose it, it all depends on what you're really looking for. Joni was looking for her own special fantasy. This just doesn't sound like Joni. Timeline Space Ghost! Ah. Ah. Get away, Timeline Space Ghost! Ah. 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 My concoction to fighting timeline space rates. We'll get the right cure soon. Oh yeah, sorry. Go back to the movie. I, I just, they were interrupting the movie. It was them. You don't even need to know about them. Hopefully, in the next movie, we won't see any. Hopefully. We greet the world of Dr. Dure. Nothing but a cheap sideshow. I told you, it's strictly for the tourists. Mike, I don't want to go in there. There's nothing more I can find out about Joni in a place like that. Rule number one about observation collecting. Never take a situation at face value. What you see is not what it really is. Better get out his pipe and slippers, Sam. Showing his age again. You two better be careful. The doctor may be casting today. Don't you let him touch me, Mike. What about me? You know how to go invisible. Only from the waist down. Wonder where that little scary guy is that takes the tickets. Maybe he's out for lunch. Yeah, I can just imagine what he's eating. Welcome to the Creature Emporium. My name is Dr. Dure, and I am the creator of all you are about to witness. It's like listening to dial a prayer on the telephone. Please follow my voice to the first platform. Mike, we didn't come here to hear a recording of some doctor's voice. I've never been in this place before. Maybe, maybe there isn't any doctor direct. Mike, take my word for it. He's around. The guillotine was invented by a French physician educated at a Jesuit college. As a deputy to the National Assembly, he proposed that decapitation be adopted as the method of capital punishment in order to make executions as swift and painless as possible. Of course, there is no way we are able to determine if the method is entirely painless. But we certainly know by observation that the entire procedure is swift. If this had been an actual demonstration, you would have noted the extreme lack of blood. Sounds like he enjoys every word of it. Look, Mike, there are wires all over the place. This whole exhibit must be mechanical. Maybe you were right about Dr. What is right about Dr. Dure? Oh, I'm... I'm... I'm sorry. I, I didn't know there was anyone about. I am everywhere, particularly in this room, since all of these creatures are byproducts of my mind. I'm afraid we came here for another reason, Doctor. My sister visited your exhibit. Many young people come here to study the mysteries of the occult. And now she's missing. Missing? Yes, she was last seen on the beach, right by your very exhibit. Oh, I see. I have a picture of Joni. The face is not familiar to me. 
I know she's been here in the past, Doctor. Many people come here to study the exquisite work of Dr. Dure. Afterwards, their faces all blend in my mind. However, you may leave your address at the box office, and I will contact you immediately if she reappears. Ah! He was right about being all over the place, didn't he? Did you see his eyes when I showed him the picture of Joni? Yeah, I saw his eyes. He knows Joni. I just know it. What he knows and what he'll talk about are two different things. According to latest research, the male gorilla may attain a height of six feet. Hey, do we have to listen to Dr. Doolittle again? I think we've had it. It is interesting to note canine teeth of the female are not developed into tusk. Yeah, that's real interesting. Especially if you're going with a female type gorilla. Hey, Samantha. Look, a tire. You're on that, kid? Oh, but it's got meaning. Everything's got meaning. You're dreaming again. Strange. Hey, Samantha, fetch. Hey, baby. Where have you been keeping yourself? Why don't you cut out, Rico? I pulled myself out of the sewer. I don't think she likes us. <laughs> I think I'm gonna cry. Hey, let me tell you something, baby. Nobody leaves us, do you understand? I think you've been around these squares long enough. I need myself a new chick today, so hop on the back and we'll cut out of here. You all right, Sam? <laughs> hey. Look at the hero. Ain't he cute? Leave him alone! Hey, it's a nice looking piece you got there. Okay, baby, you want it this way. But next time, well, you'll see. Come on, you guys, let's make it. moved into our neighborhood. Sergeant Martin, did you see those motorcyclists? Yeah, that's, uh, that's just part of the environment. Well, they almost attacked Samantha. Samantha? She knows how to take care of herself. I can't believe the police would say a thing like that. The police aren't saying it, Miss Fontaine. I'm saying it. This is my area. I know it. People like to play games. But pretty soon, you know what they are. You learn when to leave something alone or break it up. What do you know about Dr. Duray? Well, now, you, uh... Trying to play detective again? No, I'm just trying to find my sister. I told you to leave that to me, Miss Fontaine. Hey, Lieutenant. Now, that'll be something important. If you've got a fireplace, burn some wood in it. It'll be a lot better than running around loose on the streets. Miss Fontaine. Stay away from the beaches. The maniac running loose. Dr. Tug Milley, I just came back from a gathering of uh, time travelers who can't seem to find the future timeline because someone mixed it up back in the past. <sighs> We're finding that there's a time criminal involved. Well, they don't call me Dr. Tug Milley, time crime detective junior for nothing. So I'm going to fix it. I'm going to get it all mixed together. Just like this movie. I hope uh, you're enjoying this movie, uh, Dracula vs. Frankenstein. Something once known as uh, something of terror. I don't know. I'm not paying attention enough. I'm too busy working the timeline, doing the time dance, and the time warp again. But I do like the style of that Dracula and his laser ring. Oh, I'm not wearing any rings. So no example there, I suppose. Hope you guys are having fun. Wash your hands. 
make a snack when it gets boring, come back, make some comments, say some things. If we join together, we can fix the timeline. Because that's what the timeline should be. And being here with someone so nice. Well, it's about time you admitted it. I just haven't wanted to get involved. So many things I have to do. You're right. We don't want to get involved, do we? Just be good friends, right? Oh, well, the time is now, and you are here, and here with you is where I want to be. And while we walk along the sand together, now could turn into forever. Here and now, there's only you and me. Yes, you're seeing it coming into being now, Groton. The final stages of the adrenal molecular structure. The traumatic shock which has vibrated through these bodies has now been tempered. Tempered to an even rhythm. The blood has reversed through the pulmonary artery. We are all going through changes of having the same blood. It is following throughout all our bodies. We shall soon become more and more as one. Soon, perhaps, we will even look as one. Your cure is here, I promised. I promised you that. But I must have the full force of the serum first. I can no longer remain in this wheelchair. I'm chained to it. I need to feel the earth beneath my feet. Without that Groton, none of you will experience a normal life. What is it, Groton? I have not given you your shots for transformation for the past 24 hours. You should not be experiencing any forms of metamorphosis. I will not have that Groton. No, I cannot have you work with me like this. Your only question, this form is for blood. You're forcing me. Forcing me to give you a portion of the serum, Groton. You forced me because of your weakness. Because of your weakness, we will lose a measure of the serum. I will not help you again, Groton, not again. Mike, I've been thinking about what you said before. About what? Oh, about Joni being old enough to live by herself. Are you giving up? No, I'm not giving up. Just giving Joni something she's always needed. A freedom from a big sister who thinks she knows what's right and what's wrong. I'm sure Joni will thank you for that. But maybe there's something else you don't know about. Something else? I've been thinking about everything that's happened. I may have come up with a new idea. You know, everything that's happened in the last week is centered around the amusement park. And, and the only... The only amusement that extends out onto the beach is Dr. DeRay's creature emporium. You mean the place where Joni got her parchment? Yeah, who knows what else? Well, then Dory is the answer. Well, not the complete answer. There's a couple of things I want to check on that may give us enough information to force DeRay to, to tell us about Joni.
gotta be some kind of a gag. Rapper, stop or I'll shoot. Scared to death. You shouldn't be out here alone. I know, but I just got tired of waiting for you to come back. Did you find out anything about Julie? Sure, I found out he's a doctor, all right, but I still don't trust him. Come on, let's check the fear under his exhibit. attached to doesn't seem to match the others. If I'm right, it could open like a trap door. If I'm right about that, I'm right about Dr. Duray. Oh, come on, Mike. I don't want to stay here anymore. Come on, let's go. Okay, we'll go. I gotta figure out what we're gonna do about it. Mike, do you really believe what you just said? I believe the doctor is a collector of humans. Oh, that's horrible. I also believe he's trapped in that... trapped in his wheelchair and somebody... or something does his work for him. Well, what about that trap door we just saw? Easy exit for the hunter. Mike, we just met the man. I know he's strange, but he's not mad. How do you... How do you recognize madness of all the aspects in a man? Madness can be the most impossible to observe. But there's nothing we can do without proof. We'll get proof. Mike, why are you doing all this? so surprised for I told you nobody puts me. Oh, <laughs> 
That flower for you, man. Oh. It's all right. I just knocked the pollen out of him. No! I hope you saved a little for my friends here. Hey, baby. You planned this. <laughs> and are you gonna enjoy it? <laughs> nice and warm. You guys should tum tum up against something. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like a chain unwinding. Oh, Mike, let's not talk about that again. I've heard it before, Judith, but no, I think I know what it is. Stay here, I'll be right back. Mike, Mike, don't go and help me. Don't argue with me. Just stay here, I'll be back. Mike, I just couldn't stay there by myself anymore. Mike, that's just about where we were standing over there. I know. I swear I saw something. Well, what do you think it was? It looked like somebody trying to pull themselves up. I guess I'm starting to imagine things. What is it? Samantha's locket. Oh, Mike, no. I'm gonna get in there and find her, and nothing's gonna stop me. Mike, we've just got to get some help. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Dr. DeRay, preacher, and Paul Hicks. Stop. Hey, you. You gotta have a ticket to get inside this. I'll throw one over. Come back here. You gotta have a ticket. You're big. You can do that to a little man, you wise guy. But I won't be this way very long. I'll get you. Your friend. Waits for you inside. My friend? Yes, of course. Groucho knows and sees. Do not fear me. I am a little man of no use to anyone. Then you have seen my friend. Yes, yes, of course. He's waiting for you inside.
Mike. Mike, it's Joni. Your sister, alive and well. You see, you are not visiting a monster's lair. Joni, are you all right? She has experienced the most remarkable scientific venture. But as you see, she is well, and no harm has come to her. Why are you showing us all this, story? Because I want you to understand why you have been chosen to participate in my experiments. Again, you must understand. You are not trapped. But rather, you will be spiritually released by what will occur in the next few moments. Like millions of others, you believe what you see before you is an uncontested fact. A moment ago, you witnessed the claiming of another being for my experiment. Samantha. She is well. But because of what she witnessed, the destruction of three young men who wished her harm, she produced a remarkable cellular conversion. Her blood has the exact components necessary to complete my serum. I never thought such an alteration was possible at such a short period of time, but it happened. It happened, and now I know it can happen again. You two are lovers, quite obviously. And when you witness the sudden death of your lover, the traumatic shock will draw the reservoirs of blood into a single electric stream. You will feel yourself lifted to a new plateau. And this physical resurrection will be the beginning of a new life for yourself and for others, mainly my friends here. Samantha, something must have happened to her. Look strange, we're going to check the Emporium. I got a hunch she might be there. Don't forget we found those three bodies underneath it. Come on.
Sergeant. Yeah? On the roof. Is that Judith up there? Yeah, well, I don't know for sure. Sergeant, by the way to the roof. We'll check it this way.
My coffin awaits your becoming immortal in its embrace. Oh, 
there is a recent Al Adams in box set out there, and I hope you guys get it as well. It's like a book that's on them that's a pretty amazing. Uh, it's just a story of how to do it yourself and to make it. But uh, the world is different. It's a different time these days. So that those rules don't necessarily apply. But we might get a fresh start on things. It all takes about you being creative out there. And it takes me about being a genius and a mad scientist. I, 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 not so, I'm just a slightly upset scientist. I'm upset of the state of the timeline. So I'm going to go fix it. You're going to come back later on the next movie. And uh, we're all going to have fun, aren't we? And uh, yeah, check out all those other weirdos out there streaming stuff. Stay safe. Stay timely. See you back a ride at the movies. Not necessarily the same time, but it will be the same channel. Odd how that works, huh? All the girls standing in the line for the bathroom. All the girls standing in the line for the bathroom. All the girls standing in the All the girls standing in the All the girls standing in the line for the bathroom. Yeah.